Haru Okumura finally gets screen time and is waifu material. Thank you for saving me. The quietest member of the bunch, poised, eloquent, with the occasional appetite for destruction. A core member of the Phantom Thieves who arrives late in the story but is capable of stealing hearts at the buzzer. Now here are 10 reasons why Haru Okumura is waifu material. Haru is the only child in the Okumura household, essentially making her the sole heir to the Big Bang Burger Corporation, a multi-million dollar company. Basically, she's a billionaire, loaded, a fat cat, a high baller. In truth, it's made it a bit difficult for her to maintain friends once people find out who her father is, but Phantom Thieves took her in without hesitation. Despite being loaded, she is as down to earth as they come, rarely being flashy. Well, except that time when she brought the Phantom Thieves to Destiny Land, the happiest place on Persona, where they had the whole park all to themselves. Now, how great is that? <laughs> Aw oh man, this I can relate with. Unlike Futaba, Haru is a real coffee lover. You, you tricked me! This bitter but energizing black beverage is the cornerstone of any working adult. Coffee can be taken in a variety of ways, such as the following. Black? Don't try to sound tough, you sissy. Cream and sugar? What are you, Nanako? Daddy, I want it black! Surprise me? Haru likes to appreciate the subtle flavors, looking beyond the obvious bitterness, just like her life. Haru mentions that she started to grow her own coffee beans at home. More on that later. Just to show you how much Haru likes coffee, Haru once treated us to some delicious black ivory coffee, which has an interesting manufacturing process. You might say that you can taste the elephant in this one. The price for each cup is a whopping 6,000 yen. That's roughly $56 per cup. Haru is definitely a coffee lover to spend that much on a cup of coffee. Never mind. Haru has a green thumb, a real knack for taking care of plants. She maintains her own private garden on the school rooftop. As a way to contribute to the team, Haru provides them with her own rooftop grown vegetables. Vegetables such as tomatoes, carrots, etc. Giving stat boosts in battle or significant SP recovery. Taste wise, Sojiro tried her homegrown vegetables. He stated they were bitter and quite the opposite of market quality. However, they do exude a strong energizing effect, which explains the SP recovery, basically what coffee already is. Speaking Speaking of coffee, unhappy with her uncle and the current situation with the company, she thought of the idea of expressing her emotion through, you guessed it, coffee. That's right, as she's not so good with expressing herself, her plan was that this cup of black liquid will somehow express to her uncle all her issues, struggles, and complaints. What's next? She wants to get paid in advance? <laughs> Anyway, her uncle tried the coffee she brewed, and we soon realized that he's actually a nice guy. He mentions that Haru's coffee tastes similar to her grandfather's, who was a gentle cafe owner who couldn't care less for profit and gains. Both Haru and her uncle leave with a newfound trust and decide to rebuild the company with her grandfather's vision in mind. The word fluffy would be an accurate description of Haru's appearance. On her <clears throat> head, she's got curly and fluffed up ginger hair that doesn't reach past her neck a very unique hairstyle. This fluffy description also connects with her wardrobe. Customizing the school uniform to her taste, she can often be seen in pastel colors. Her winter outfit consists of a light pink turtleneck cardigan, which comes extra fluffy. Adding to that, she wears a school pattern skirt and white leggings with a simple floral pattern, plus a pair of Mary Jane shoes. During the summer, it's mainly pastel colored dresses or blouses for Haru. It's quite humid. In Persona 5 Dancing Star Night, Haru reveals that she already had some previous dance experience particularly in the style of ballet. Imagine Dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy type of dancing, where you always have to dance on the tips of your toes. With the amount of crushed feet and dreams, it's arguably the most difficult form of dance and is constituted as a sport and an art form. This particular style of dance requires both athleticism and grace, needing to perform various maneuvers while making it seem effortless. Haru did stop learning it when she was younger because her father only used her hobby as a way to brag for political gain. Haru also mentions that she was initially inspired to take ballet due to a special painting in her house, which depicted the grace of a ballet dancer. It supposedly was a painting by a very famous artist, but the name escapes Haru. This drives Yusuke mad. <laughs> what an immense discovery! Oh, you shall join me, Joker! I cannot contain my excitement! With Haru at least, you know she doesn't have two left feet and is someone you could dance the night away with. Whenever Haru is around other adults, her affluent upbringing has taught her to always be reserved and obedient of what is asked of her. You'll rarely see Haru pulling a Ryuji. For real? When Futaba hacked into the school's database, she learned that Haru's grades are definitely not a weakness. Despite being the group's senpai along with Makoto, Haru is always so formal and polite when talking to the group. She never talks down to anyone and is slow to point fingers when things go wrong. She eventually lightens up on the formality a bit and starts calling similar aged people like Makoto, Mako-chan. 
Chan, and even Morgana Mona Chan later on. Anyway, she's the ideal waifu to bring home to mom and dad. Ooh boy. <laughs> Despite what I said in the last section, Say don't mistake but... Haru's polite behavior for being a blind sheep. In my opinion, she's actually the most rebellious member amongst the Phantom Thieves. Not wanting to be sold off to an arranged marriage with Sugimura, Haru has the iron will to go directly against her father of all people. When you really think about the story, Haru had the most to lose. By pushing through with changing her father's cognition, she accepted the huge stakes of being labeled as a criminal's daughter. Unfortunately, they actually did much worse than that, where they accidentally killed Mr. Okumura. And no one ate dinner that night. Under the guise of beauty thief, I mean noir, no this noir, she joined up with the phantom thieves to steal her father's heart and rid city of crime. Her phantom thief outfit consists of a purple pink themed color scheme, and in terms of style, seems to be a healthy mix of old western bandits due to the mask, but with some french flair given the hat with the feather. Haru is a straight up cinnamon roll, as tender and as sweet as they come, most of the time. Is that a stop sign? Help me. Haru has been through a lot, having to deal with a forced marriage, accidentally killing her father, and stress of taking over the company. Despite grieving, she was able to stay calm and polite to everyone, always considering other people's feelings above her own. Haru has a real gentle laugh. Whenever you try to crack jokes and even bad ones, her innocent giggle is one of her unique character traits that just brightens up your day. <laughs> When speaking to Futaba and Joker about weaknesses, they both failed to find much weaknesses in Haru. Haru eventually admitted that she's weak with technology. For one, she doesn't even know how to use a smartphone, and when she touches a computer, it can get really bad. I really don't know much. Until recently, I thought booting your PC meant literally kicking it. <laughs> Haru mentions that she could care less about knowing her weakness. All she really wanted to do was connect with them on a deeper level. I hadn't thought of it like that before. You're such a cinnamon roll. You've officially heard it from our last cinnamon roll. As mentioned earlier, Haru shares an occasionally worrying but amusing appetite for destruction. Her weapons do little to conceal this. Her main weapon is a giant axe, almost as tall as her. And as for her ranged weapon, it's a grenade launcher. A freaking grenade launcher. Where do you even hide that? You wouldn't want to be caught on the wrong end of the chopping block with this young lady. Pardon me. Okay. This is gonna hurt. Dead. During one of the discussions with Haru and Ryuji, Ryuji asked Haru about the axe sitting on her balcony, mainly using it to chop some firewood by herself, even though her father always forbade her. Mm -hmm. My father explicitly forbade me from it, but I always just snuck into the yard and did it anyway. One would argue that the axe is not just for chopping wood. Sakamoto-kun? Should a gentleman like yourself really be rummaging around an innocent woman's room? Maybe I'll fetch the axe. Haru, you are one scary lady. At number one, Haru is determined to get more screen time. This is an inside joke with OG Persona 5 players. You see, in the original game, she doesn't become available for seduction, I mean confidant ranking, until the last 20% of the game. By then, odds are you've already committed to someone or everyone. Good luck with that mess. In the Persona Q2 trailer, she's actually the first character to show up. Looking good, Haru. It's great that in Persona 5 Royal, they did make some effort to give Haru some more screen time by sticking her in the background of various scenes foreshadowing her future appearance. She still shows up at the same place, but Persona 5 Royal is a much longer game. One could say that now, Haru's screen time is as big as her forehead. Mm -hmm. Did you say something? Do you agree that Haru is waifu material? Leave a like and comment on what was your favorite reason about Haru, and be sure to check out the other Persona 5 waifu videos as well.